Welcome back to the Whirlpool, where fibs and fabrications are pulled under and drowned. I'm Michael Worley. A new day has dawned. To the past, say farewell. Live each day for the Lord, or you're going to hell. I can still hear my father's voice as he whispered those words into my ear to wake me each and every morning. Now, as we stand once again at the dawn of a new year, I find myself reflecting on their gentle but urgent wisdom. Unlike our spiritually flaccid cousins attending heretical churches, we of the one true church live every day in full knowledge of both Christ's endless love and his infinite, inescapable judgment. To live as part of the one true church is to spend every moment existing in the acute, electrifying awareness that your salvation is not guaranteed. St. Paul himself tells us that we are to work out our salvation in fear and trembling. Those are wise words indeed, for our vigilance need only slip for a moment in order for us to find ourselves in a state of mortal sin. Let us consider one hypothetical example. You are standing in line at your favorite bookstore, Pashalis, waiting to purchase the new edition of The Sacred and the Profane by Bishop Clarence Kelly, when your gaze momentarily comes to rest on the buttocks of the man in line ahead of you, who, for some unfathomable reason, has chosen to do his book shopping in a pair of flagrantly immodest Lycra bicycle shorts. Having thus opened a small but inviting crack in the door of your soul, demonic thoughts inspired by this stranger and his indecent derriere force their way in. Before you realize what is happening, you are under a full-scale spiritual assault. Whether you're looking for a new Bible, a meeting place for your Tradcath book club, or you just want to relax in our St. Drogo's Cafe, where the coffee really is good to the very last drop, Pashalis is the place for you. Find us at Crossroads Shopping Center on San Sui Parkway in Wilkes-Barre. Did I pronounce it correctly that time? San Sui is right? Okay. Just make sure to cut this out. This shouldn't be in the commercial. Because you are an observant and dutiful churchgoer, you realize almost immediately that you have committed at least five mortal sins. Number one, adultery. When the alluring stranger reached back with his left hand to pull the fabric of his bicycle shorts out from his intergluteal cleft, you saw he was wearing a wedding band, and you know that Christ himself teaches that one who desires to commit adultery has already committed it in his heart. Number two, homosexual lust, a hard sin to beat off because it can come on you anywhere at any time. Number three, pornography, for what else were the unspeakable images that raced through your mind as you stared at the stranger's fit and shapely posterior, but your own private dirty movie? Number four, masturbation, what else could you possibly have been doing while you sat watching that pornography in the dingy, ejaculate-soaked, triple-X movie theater of your mind? And number five, sacrilege because the whole sordid, sinful business unfolded while you were standing in your favorite ecclesiastical bookstore, a holy place consecrated to God in service of his one true church. Covered in a dewy film of guilty perspiration, you pay for your book. You linger around the exit long enough to allow the stranger in the lycra shorts who led you to this foul temptation to begin with to pedal his two-wheeled hell cycle out of sight. Then you walk out of the store into the harsh light of day, determined to go straight to church and repent for your depraved transgressions. You rush down the sidewalk to the corner, you step into the street, heedless of the illuminated do not walk sign, and are run over by a diaper service van which kills you instantly. You die in a state of mortal sin. You spend the next forever years burning in hell, and even the eventual arrival of the stranger in bicycle shorts cannot ease your suffering. Sobering, isn't it? But perhaps you've grown accustomed to this newer, more liberal church, with its vernacular masses and its less explicit homophobia. Perhaps you think I'm overstating the peril of our earthly situation. There goes Worley, spreading his religious extremism again. I'm sorry if I've been unable to convince you, but you know what you will find convincing? 
an eternity of torture. But to those of you who have been moved by my entirely suppositional scenario, let me encourage you to view it as motivation. We are not given certain knowledge of how long our lives on this earth will be or where our souls will spend eternity. Therefore, we must make every moment count while we can. So don't plan to protest outside that abortion clinic next week. Do it today. Don't wait to call your local public school to complain about the blasphemous garbage our children are being taught in science and social studies classes. Do it now. Don't say, I'll fight the gay agenda tomorrow. Rise up proudly before your Lord Jesus Christ and say, I will be the vessel for your love. Take me, use me, make me your missionary. Because I know as long as I have you inside me, I can't possibly blow it. For The Whirlpool, I'm Michael Worley.